Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, we are reading How to Train Your Dragon. Um, we met Hiccup, whose father is the chief of his village, and him and his friends are at the age, and some not friends, uh, are at the age where they have to go get their first dragon. It didn't go as they planned. Uh, it kind of got messed up. So they almost got eaten. But the one kid didn't get a dragon, so Hiccup gave him his and went back in and found a different one. And they were all making fun of him. They call him Toothless. And then they have to now have to train their dragon for a certain point in time. Uh, they were told to go find a book called How to Train Your Dragon in the library. So they went and found it, and it was probably three pages, four pages. And the answer, the chapter, the first and last, the golden rule of dragon training is to yell at it. The louder, the better. The end. And that is the whole book. So that really didn't help them any. So now we're going to go on and see how they can train their dragon. Chapter five, a chat with old Wrinkly. The next morning, Hiccup checked the dragon under his bed. It was still asleep. When his mother, Bahalarama, asked him to breakfast, asked him at breakfast, how did initiation go yesterday, dear? Hiccup said, oh, it was fine. I caught my dragon. That's nice, dear, Bahalarama replied vaguely. Stoic the Vast looked up briefly from his bowl and boomed, excellent, excellent, before getting back to the important task of shoveling food into his mouth. After breakfast, Hiccup went to sit on the front step beside his grandfather, who was smoking a pipe. It was a beautiful, cold, clear winter morning, and with, with not a breath of wind and the sea all around as flat as glass, Old Wrinkly blew out the smoke rings content, contently as he watched the sun coming up. Hiccup, Hiccup shivered and chucked stones into the bracken. Neither of them spoke for the first time. At last, Hiccup said, I got that dragon. I said you would, didn't I? replied Old Win Old Wrinkly. Very pleased with himself, Old Wrinkly had taken up soothsaying in his old age, most unsuccessfully, looking into the future as a complicated business, so he was particularly pleased that he had gotten this right. Something extraordinary, you said, complained Hiccup. A truly unusual dragon, you said. An animal that would really make me stand out in the crowd. Absolutely, agreed Old Wrinkly. The entrails were undeniable. The only extraordinary thing about this dragon, continued Hiccup, is how extraordinarily small it is. In that it is super unusual, I even more of a laughing stock than ever. Oh dear, said Old Wrinkly, chuckling in, uh, chuckling in a wheezy way over his pipe. Hiccup looked at him reproachfully. Old Wrinkly hurriedly turned the laugh into a cough. Size is all relative, Hiccup, said Old Wrinkly. All of these dragons are super small compared to a real sea dragon. A real sea dragon is 50 times as big as that little creature. A real sea dragon from the bottom of the ocean can swallow 10 large Viking ships in one gulp and not even notice. A real sea dragon is a cruel, careless mystery like the mighty ocean itself. One moment calm as a scallop, the next raging like an octopus. Well, here on Burke, said Hiccup, where we haven't any sea dragons to compare anything with, my dragon is just considerably smaller than everybody else's. You're getting off the point. I, am I? asked Old Wrinkly. The point is, I just don't see how I'm, going, I'm ever going to become a hero, said Hiccup gloomily. I am the least heroic boy in the whole hooligan tribe. Oh, pshaw! This ridiculous tribe, fumed Old Wrinkly. Okay, so you're not what we all call a born hero. You're not big enough and tough and charismatic charismatic like Snotlout, but you're just going to have to work at, at it. You're going to have to learn how to be a hero the hard way. Anyway, said Old Wrinkly, it might just be what this tribe needs, a change in leadership style, because the thing is, times are changing. We can't get away with the being bigger and more violent than everybody else anymore. Imagination, that's what they need and what you've got. A hero of the future is going to have to be clever and cunning, not just a big lump of overdeveloped muscles. He's going to have to stop everyone quarreling among themselves and get them to face the enemies together. How am I going to pers persuade anybody to do anything? Asked Hiccup. They've started calling me Hiccup the Useless. This is not a great name for a military leader. 
You have to see the bigger picture, Hiccup, continued old Wrinkly, ignoring him. You're called a few names. You're not a natural as Babe Bashy Ball. Who cares? These are little problems in the grand scheme of things. It's all very well for you to say they are little problems, said Hiccup crossly, but I have a lot of little problems. I have to train this super small dragon in time for Thor's day, Thursday or be thrown out of the hairy hooligan tribe forever. Ah, oh, yes, said old Wrinkly thoughtfully. There's a book on the subject, isn't there? Remind me, how does the professor of Meathead University think you should train a dragon? He thinks you should yell at it, said Hiccup, gloom gloomily chucking stones again. Show the beast to his master by sheer charis charismatic force of your personality. That sort of thing. I have about as much charisma as a stranded jellyfish, and yelling is just another thing I'm useless at. Yes, said Old Wrinkly. But maybe you'll have to train your dragon the hard way. You know a very great deal about dragons, don't you, Hiccup? All that dragon watching you've been doing over the years? That's a secret, said Hiccup uncomfortably. I've seen you talking to them, said Old Wrinkly. That's not true, protested Hiccup, going bright red in the face. Okay, then, soothed Old Wrinkly, calming, calmly smoking his pipe. It's not true. There was a bit of silence. It is true, admitted Hiccup, but for Thor's sake, don't tell anybody. They wouldn't understand. Talking to dragons is a highly unusual skill, said Old Wrinkly. Maybe, he said, you can train a dragon better by talking to it than by yelling at it. That's sweet, said Hiccup, and very touching thought. However, a dragon is not a fluffy creature like a dog, a cat, or a pony. A dragon is not going to do what you say just because you ask it pretty please. From what I know about dragons, said Hiccup, I should say that yelling was a pretty good method. But it has its limitations, doesn't it? Old Wrinkly pointed out. I would say that yelling was highly effective on any dragon smaller than a sea lion, and positively suicidal if you tried it on anything larger. Why don't you come up with some alternative training schemes yourself? You might be able to add something to Professor Yobish's book. I've often thought that the, that, that book needed a little extra, a little something extra. I just can't quite put my finger on it. Words, said Hiccup. The book needs a lot more words. Okay. That was the end of chapter five, which was called A Chat with Old Wrinkly. So what did we learn in that chapter? Well, we already knew that Hiccup was kind of laughing sock of the village and kind of knew he was tiny and his dragon was tiny, but there was something that Old Wrinkly pointed out that was very special and highly unusual that he does that nobody else seems to do. He talks to dragons. He talks. He doesn't yell, which is what the book tells you to do. He talks to them. But Joel Wrinkly says, try that when you're training your dragon because it might help you. So that's probably important to know. And so we're going to go on now with chapter six. Meanwhile, deep in the ocean. Meanwhile, deep in the ocean, but not so very far from the Isle of Burke, a real sea dragon such as Old Wrinkly had been describing lay sleeping on the sea bed. He was incredibly large. He had been there so long that he almost seemed to be part of the ocean floor itself, a great underwater mountain, covered in shells and barnacles and some of his limbs half buried in the sand. Generation after generation of little hermit crabs had been born and had died in this dragon's ears. Hundreds and hundreds of years he slept because he had a rather, he had a rather large meal. He had the luck to catch a Roman legion camping on a cliff top. They were completely cut off, and he had, and he had spent an enjoyable afternoon wolfing them, wolfing down the whole lot of them from commanding officer to the lowliest private. Horses, chariots, shields, and spears—the entire lot went down the ravenous reptilian gullet. And while things such as a golden chariot wheels are an additional source of fiber to a dragon's diet, they do take some time to digest. The real dragon, sorry, the dragon had crawled down into the depths of the ocean and gone into a sleep coma. Dragons can stay in their in this suspended state for eternity, half dead, half alive, buried under fathom after fathom of icy cold seawater. Not a muscle of this particular dragon had moved for six to seven centuries. But the previous week, a killer whale who had chased some seals unexpectedly deep was surprised to notice a slight movement in the upper eyelid of a dragon's right eye. An ancestral memory stirred in the whale's brain, and he swam away from there as fast as his fins would carry him. And a week later, the sea around the dragon mountain, which had previously been teeming with crabs and lobsters and shoals and shoals of fish, was a great underwater desert. 
Not a mollusk stirred, not a scallop shimmied. The only sign of life for miles and miles was the rapid jerking of both the dragon's eyelids, fluttering up and down as if the dragon had suddenly gone into a lighter sleep and was dreaming about who knows what dark dreams. Okay, so that is an interesting chapter. Um, that was a short chapter, but what have we learned? The evil, evil sea dragons that Old Wrinkly told us about in the previous chapter, there's actually one right off the island sleeping for centuries who now looks like he's trying to wake up. <sighs> that can't be good. As one of my friends always says, that can't be good. All right, let's read the next chapter. Chapter 7. Toothless wakes up. Toothless woke up about three weeks later. Fish legs and hiccup were at Hiccup's house. Everybody else was out, so Hiccup decided to take the opportunity to check on Toothless' flat basket. He pulled it out from under the bed, and a thin plume of bluish-gray smoke was drifting out from under the lid. Fish legs whistled. He's awake, all right, said Fish legs. Here we go. Hiccup opened the basket. The smoke bellowed out and made Hiccup and Fish legs cough. Hiccup fanned it away. Once his eyes had stopped watering, he could make out a very small, ordinary dragon. Looking up at him with enormous, innocent grass green eyes. Hello, Toothless, which translated into the uh, Dragonese would be how do you know there, Toothless? But English is easier to know. Said Hiccup in what he hoped was a good accent in Dragonese. What are you doing? asked Fishleg curiously. Dragonese is punctuated by shrill shrieks and popping Noise and sound, extraordinary when spoken by a human. Just talking to it, mumbled Hiccup, very embarrassed. So, we have a book here, page here from the book, from a book, talking about learning to speak Dragonese. So it's an introduction, in order to train your dragon without using the traditional method of yelling at it, you must first learn to speak Dragonese. Dragons are the only other creature who speak a language as complicated and sophisticated as humans. Here are some of the common dragon phrases to get you started. Nia Krapa in the Dihusa Pishu, which is no pooing inside the house, please. Me mama no like it yum yum on the burn, on the bum. My mother does not like to be bitten on the bottom. Pishu Klindi Gaba Umi Frinderly. Please, would you be so kind as to spit out my friend? And do it a one at a time. Let's try that again. So now we know some Dragonese. And I will be using the Nia Krapa in the house of Pishu all the time. Just talking to it, gasped Fish Legs in astonishment. What do you mean you're talking to it? You can't talk to it. It's an animal for Thor's sake. Oh, shut up, Fish Legs, said Hiccup impatiently. You're frightening it. Toothless puffed and puffed and blew out some smoke rings. He inflated his neck to make himself look bigger, which is something dragons do when they are scared or angry. Eventually, he got up the courage to unfurl his wings and flap up onto Hiccup's arm. He walked his way up and onto Hiccup's shoulder, and Hiccup turned his face towards him. Toothless pressed his forehead into Hiccup's forehead and gazed deeply and solemnly into Hiccup's eyes, and they stayed there, snout to snout, without moving, for about sixty seconds. Hiccups had to blink a lot because the gaze of the dragons the gaze of a dragon is hypnotic and gives you unnerved feeling that it's sticking your that is sucking your soul away. Hiccup was just thinking, Wow, this is amazing. I'm really making contact here. When Toothless bent down and bit him on the arm. Hiccup let up let out a yelp and threw Toothless off him. F fish hissed Toothless, hovering in the air in front of Hiccup. What fish now? I haven't got any fish, said Hiccup and Dragonese, rubbing his arm. Luckily, Toothless didn't have any teeth, but dragons have powerful jaws, so it was still painful. Toothless bit him on the other arm. F -f fish said Toothless again. Are you okay? asked Fishlegs. I can't believe I'm asking this, but what's he saying? He wants to eat, replied Hiccup, grimly rubbing with both his arms. He tried to make his voice sound firm but pleasant, to dominate the creature by the sheer force of his personality, as Goober had said, but we have no fish. Okay, then, said Toothless, eat cat. 
He made a lunge for Fiddlesticks, who streaked out the nearest wall with a yell in terror. Hiccup just managed to grab Toothless by the tail as he flew off in pursuit. The dragon struggled, wildly shouting, Want fish now? Want fish now? Cats are yummy. Want food now? We don't have any fish, repeated Hiccup from behind gritted teeth, feeling all his calmness deserting him. And you can't eat the cat. I like him. Fiddlesticks mewed indignantly from a beam high up on the roof. In the roof. They put Toothless in the Stoic's bedroom, where there was a mouse problem. For a while, he was swooping and swooping after the desperately squeaking mice, but then he got bored and started attacking the mattress. Stop! yelled Hiccup as a feather flew in all directions. Toothless replied by throwing up the remains of the recently deceased mouse right in the middle of a Stoic's pillow. Arg said Hiccup. Arg said Stoic the Vast, who entered the room that was at that very moment. Toothless launched himself at Stoic the Vast Beard, which he mistook for chicken. Get him off, said Stoic. He doesn't do what I say, said Hiccup. Yell very loudly at him, Stoic shouted very loudly. Hiccup yelled as loud as he could, Please, will you stop eating my father's beard? As Hiccup had expect, suspected, Toothless took absolutely no notice whatsoever. I knew I'd be useless at yelling, said Hiccup, gloomily. Drop it to the floor, you reptile, yelled Stoic. Toothless dropped to the floor. You see, said Stoic, that's how to deal with dragons. Newt's breath and hook fang, Stoic's hunting dragons, came pad padding into the room. Toothless stiffened as they paced around them, their yellow eyes glinting evilly. Each was about the size of a leopard, and they were delight delighted by his arrival, as a couple of giant cats might be from a cute little kitten. Greeting, fellow fire breather, hissed Newt's breath as he gave the wriggling newcomer a sniff. We must wait, purred Hoof Hookfang menacingly, until we are all alone, and then we can give you a proper welcome. He gave a vicious swipe at Toothless with one paw, a claw with, like a kitchen knife just nicked Toothless on the rump, and the little dragon howled and jumped into Hiccup's tunic until only his tail was poking, poking out of the neck. Hook Fang, bellowed Stoic. My claw slipped, whined Hook Fang. Get it out of here before I make it you two, two handbags, yelled Stoic, and Newt's breath and Hook Fang slunk out, muttering obscene dragon curses under their breath. As I was saying, said Stoic the Vast, that's how to deal with dragons. Stoic was looking at Toothless with the unchar with uncharacteristic anxiety. Son, said Stoic, hoping this, there might be some sort of mistake. Is this dragon your dragon? Yes, father, Hiccup admitted. It's very well, it's very small, isn't it? Said Stoic slowly. Stoic was not an observant person, but even he could not fail to notice that the dragon was really remarkably small. And it, and it hasn't got any teeth. There was an awkward silence. Fishlegs came to Hiccup's rescue. That's because it's an unusual breed, said Fishleg, a unique and er, violent species called the Toothless Daydream, distant relation of the monstrous nightmare. But far more ruthless and so rare, they are practically extinct. Really? Stoic surveyed the Toothless Daydream doubtfully. It looks like a common or garden to me. Uh, but with respect, Chief, said Fishleg, that's where you're wrong, to the amateur eye and indeed to its prey. It looks exactly like a common or garden. But if you look a little closer, the characteristics of the daydream marking. Fishleg pointed to the wart on the end of Toothless' nose. Marks it out from the more ordinary breed. By Thor, you're right, said Stoic. And it's not just your average Toothless daydream either, Fishleg was getting carried away now. This particular dragon is royal blood. No, said Stoic, very impressed. Stoic was a terrific snub. Yes, said Fishleg solemnly. Your son has only gone and burgled the offspring of King Daggerfangs himself, the reptilian ruler of the wild dragon cliff. The royal daydreams tend to start out small, but they grow into creatures of immersive and even gargantuan size. Just like you, eh, Hiccup? said Stoic, giving a great laugh and roughing his son's hair. Stoic's Tommy gave out a plant, plaintive rumble like a distant underground explosion. Time for a little supper, I think. Clear up this mess, will you boys? Stoic strode off, relieved to have had his faith in his son restored. Thanks, Fishlegs, said Hiccup. You are inspired. Not at all, said Fishlegs. I owe you one after setting setting you up for that fight with Snoutlot. 
Father's going to find out at some point in time anyway, though, said Hiccup gloomily. Not necessarily, said Fishlight. Look at all that talking you were doing with Toothless Daydream here. That was incredible. Incredible. Unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. You'll be training him the ne in, no t in next to no time. I was talking to him, all right, said Hiccup, but he wasn't but he didn't listen to a word I said. When he was going to bed that night, Hiccup didn't want to leave Toothless in front of the fire with the new breath and hook fang. Can I take him to bed with me? He asked Stoic. A dragon is a working animal, said Stoic the Vest. Too much hugging and kissing will make him less lose his vicious streak. But Newt's breath will kill him if I leave him alone with them. Newt's breath gave an impress, appreciative growl. It would be my pleasure, he hissed. Nonsense, boomed Stoic, unaware of Newt's breath, last remark as he didn't speak Dragonese. He gave Newt's breath a friendly cuff around the horns. Newt's breath just wants to play. That sort of rough and tumble is good for a young dragon. Makes him learn to stick up for himself. Hook Fang extended his claws like switchblades, like switchblades and drummed, uh, him, drummed them on the hearth. Hiccup pretended to say goodnight to Toothless by the fire, but smuggled him into his bedroom under his tunic. He must be absolutely quiet, he told Toothless sternly, as they climbed into bed and the dragon nodded eagerly. In fact, he snored loudly the entire night, but Hiccup didn't care. Hiccup spent the whole of the winter on Burke in various states of very cold, ranging from fairly chilly to absolutely freezing. At night, too many layers were considered, hiss considered sissy, so Hiccup generally lay awake for a couple hours until he had shivered himself to a light sleep. Now, though, as Hiccup stretched his feet out against Toothless's back, he felt waves of heat coming off the little dragon, gradually creeping up his legs and warming his freezing cold stomach and heart, even traveling right up to his head, which had been truly warm for almost six months. Even his ears burned contently. It would have to take it would have taken the snoring of six strong dragons to have woken Hiccup so deeply did he sleep that night. Alrighty guys, so we're at the end of that chapter. Um, they had to lie to Dad because he thought the dragon was small and kind of ordinary, which it is. But they told him a whole thing about it being a toothless daydream. Which is like the most scary dragon they know of. Is that true? Not necessarily. I mean, that's all we know. He's just a common dragon. Uh, what language did Toothless learn and, and, and can speak that nobody else can? Dragonese, which we learned how to say, don't poop in the house, please. And I'll well, practice that some more later. Um, they, what, well, his dad's dragons, how did they react to Toothless being there? They wanted to kill him. That's never a good thing, is it? So, that is the end where we're going to stop this time. Uh, we'll read some more of How to Train Your Dragons on the next video. See you then.